All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Yana Torno, who is on the other coast in Miami, Florida. How are you doing, Yana? I'm doing great, John. Thank you for having me here. Of course. And Yana is the founder of Question Base, the brilliant bot by Slack that helps startups document knowledge and answer questions right in their workflow in, in Slack. Uh, Yana is a marketing business co founder, Question Base, charge of client relationships and gathering market intel. And what we're going to talk about today is building the zero to one GTM motion for an AI startup. Okay. Sounds. Sounds very intriguing. So, Yana, do you want to explain what you, what a, what the zero one GTM is? I think it's really getting to that proof point that whatever AI solution you are building at the um, at the moment is something that the market needs. So, really mm -hmm. getting the so called product market fit uh, in startup terms and validating that there is sufficient pain out there for the problem and there is a match between how you're selling that solution on the market so you can then go on and scale it so really it's these early days of validating the idea trying maybe different value props trying different segments and working your way to this magic land for every startup where you align both the product vision and the market needs yeah, because let's face it, uh, Yana, they're, they're, with AI obviously you know, being such a huge thing right now, there's a temptation to just build a solution and then look for a problem, right? Um, which is sometimes, but what you're saying is what you did is the op is, is that you did the, the proper go-to-market, the proper investigation, the proper fit, and that to make sure that whatever you're bringing to market with AI actually has some benefit. John, I really think that with this company, we were very lucky founders because uh, we managed to start a few months before um, AI exploded at the end mm -hmm. of 2022. And we were already working with the problem and manually sifting through the workflows of teams, trying to figure out how are they right now organizing their knowledge? Is there a way to extract some of the questions and answers the team was sharing between each other in the chat and turn it into documentation. So we were having that um, our fingers on the pulse. We already knew that there exists a problem. Companies are facing it. We just didn't have the right way to solve it. Right. And as we, as we started working with AI, we were one of the early solutions that started pitching to companies it's an AI knowledge base. It's an AI on top of your Slack. And people thought we are nuts. Mm -hmm. It was not in 2022 in the beginning. This was just not something that anybody was uh, talking about. And people felt very uncomfortable with it. Mm -hmm. And I think it served us ultimately very well because we were, we ended up being early on on that trend. And that helped us get a lot of interest, which meant always for an early stage company, it means just a lot of testers. It means mm -hmm. that you're also going to end up making a lot of mistakes and turning a lot of people, but it's also uh, data is so incredibly important in the early days. So we had this cool factor in the early days that really helped us build upon the solution. And, and part of it, tell me how much was uh, the, as people started to understand AI and they understand where, or it started to understand, at least at a superficial level, um, where the data comes from. Obviously, what, you're build, what you've built is something that can draw on your own data, right? So you can protect that. So you can, so your data does, am I right that your data doesn't get commingled with the rest of the world? That's absolutely right. Everything works in isolation and company are completely shielded. Company data is completely shielded within their own realm of information. Yeah, and and uh, and we've heard a lot of talk about uh, about agents, and just explain to me the bots versus agents. The AI bots are really good at the single action, uh, where they are tasked to, in our case, answer a question. Whereas agentic uh, abilities are the next step. So in a way, like you can you can um, add a multi-step workflow so it will be 
I ask the bot for a question, it gives me the answer, but beyond that, it also does an action on my behalf. It maybe asks me for an approval to enter some data in Salesforce. It then does an enter and update the information in Salesforce on my behalf. So that expansion of the capabilities of bots is also a very important trend that right now is happening on the market. Yeah, yeah, and um, and what has been the as you as you brought this to market? What was the what was the reaction that you got? It was uh, a little bit of uh, mixed feelings, especially before ChatGPT mm -hmm. took over the personal use case and the fascination of the average user. So it was really hard to uh, penetrate organizations with the solution. But as I think people got more comfortable through the commercialization of ChatGPT, they started seeing more and more abilities to implement uh, productivity AI tools in their workflow. And that's what opened the opportunity for us too. Mm -hmm. So I think it's been a trend that's gone on. Another trend that happened uh, in the previous year is uh, this massive interest towards the solutions. Everybody was willing to try anything, right. it didn't matter much what it is, let's just try it out. Uh, whereas in uh, 2024, we are seeing that uh, the multitude of tools is just incomparable to anything that people have historically experienced. So companies are starting, starting to understand the data breaches there under the risk of the potential um, dispersion of data across multiple uh, siloed systems and so on and so forth. So it's getting more regulated from the companies, which is mm -hmm. also good because companies are becoming much more intentional about their purchases. So it's a very different market from last year, which was like, let's just throw it out. One person will install something and let's see how it goes to this year where it's more going to be a company wide decision and something that uh, more um, members of a company will be engaged with in the purchasing decision. Yeah, no, I, I would I would agree with you, and I think uh, the other thing too is uh, when when new things come out. I'm I I started my journey in America. I'm originally from Ireland, but I started my journey in America during the dot com era uh, in the mid '90s. So moved to Silicon Valley, and I remember at the time. Uh, even you know big companies moving to the internet like we had customers at the company I was with who were like we're never going to the web that's never never going to happen right six months later they're going to the web um, same thing happened with cloud computing if you remember oh no we're not going to put our we're not going to put our data in the cloud a couple of months later everybody's data in the cloud and I think uh, AI had a little bit of that at the beginning where people were getting are we're very wary about doing it, or is AI really going to work? And I think now people have accepted that it is, and now we've moved on to the whole area that we mentioned earlier about securing your data. That's right. That's right. And I think that's still uh, it's a challenge for bigger organizations with a lot of historically accumulated data to transition to AI because uh, AI is really good at coming up. <laughs> the more data you feed it, it actually gets the more delusion of the, the <laughs> critical thinking <laughs> goes down. So uh, companies have a problem, data problem right now. And that is uh, especially prominent in uh, enterprises where you're going to experience uh, um, historically the, the data yeah. in the sources was not necessarily a priority to be kept up to date and you had maintained multiple systems of record with con, um, controversial information in them. Yeah. And uh, you're going to, if you just patch LOM on top of it, it's, um, it's not going to solve anybody's problem because the problem is in the data, in the quality of the data. So if you ask the LOM a question, it will pull out all the information from these various sources, but it's not actually going to know which one is the right the one yeah. where I answer. So I think that we are all safe. Like we are seeing um, the new trend in AI uh, compared to last year where AI is going to take our jobs. It's going yeah. <laughs> to eradicate all mundane work to right now being much more um, assisting position. Yeah. The person will be the expert, the judge, uh, the human, the so-called human in the loop in the design principles. 
and we're going to have the AI to assist with by solving AI through bots, through agents, assisting with these uh, more yeah. uh, practical tasks. Yeah, Deb, and it's a great point that you raised there, just about the the data. Um, that's why Pipeliner CRM we introduced uh, the uh, duplication checker because, as you said, I think that's what you're correct. People are starting to realize that they think, oh, AI is going to be fantastic. I'm going to put it on top of all my data. It's going to make it easy to get at. Until you realize, well, hold on a second, my data is pretty dirty right it's not it's not clean there's duplicates you said they're in different systems and all of that so i think maybe a good thing that's going to come out of this yana is that it's going to force organizations to really look at their data and the, and uh, their data rules and cleanliness of data going forward absolutely john and the data is actually becoming the unique ip in the organization and i think that companies had a hard time accessing that IP, especially because the way of documenting it was so hard. You would either have people who are in some kind of a leading positions who are tasked to document the project, document the uh, process through their presentations, through conversations with the team, but all these conversational data that was created was not necessarily integrated and saved for re later re uh, reuse. And what we are seeing AI being incredibly good at is sifting through conversations, billions of data points, and actually um, extrapolating meaning out of it, extracting concrete pieces of data, and integrating them back. So I think that the IP of companies is now becoming their data and they understand it and companies understand that that's what differentiates them from other companies because you no longer have a competitive advantage in your workflow the workflow in a way becomes something that anybody can can copy the organization so shrinking in size but this ip and expert knowledge is really what's going to distinguish one organization from the other yeah, no, I, I I totally agree, and I think that's going to be a big challenge for for some people. Uh, then the other phenomenon that we've seen around AI and AI tools, you know, is because there's so many of them have come out so quickly, is that you know people are adopting a tool, and then five minutes later they're switching to a different tool because. So how have you, how have you how are you addressing that and making sure that your tool has you know, stickability, if you like, because as I said, people are people are used to now already to now jumping from tool to tool to tool. I wish we had solved it and I could give you like a perfect, <laughs> perfect answer. But um, I think that people's patience to receive value has shrunk mm -hmm. uh, significantly. So what we are looking into is before time to value, you had even a few minutes of attention span of a tester. Now you maybe have like a few seconds mm -hmm. in the onboarding experience for them to already. But luckily, thanks to AI, you can do a lot of things to simulate that success loop. So in our case, that success loop is a person asking a question and receiving an answer automatically. Mm -hmm. So with question based, what we do is that we know that critically, it's really important for people to experience that success loop the moment they have installed the bot. And because the bot has no prior knowledge, it's going to be very hard to answer a question. So what we do is we dig maybe in the first seven days of history of Slack and try to reuse the information in some meaningful way or encourage the right. people to um, install uh, some of the integrations to Notion or Google Docs or whatsoever. Um, and allow them to ask a question against their data and receive an immediate answer. So we immediately try to um, shortcut the problem with code start issue and try to give them the value that uh, as fast as possible. Yeah. So tell me, um, I mean, because it's an interesting concept uh, about the uh, about Slack and chat. Yeah. How much information is hidden in our in our chat histories? You know, because we we get into a discussion or we're talking about so maybe it's even a group thing, and there's a lot of great things. And then later on, I mean, who goes back and really rereads the chats or anything like that, or you, because another one comes up? So just explain to me how how your product uh, solves this issue. Absolutely. So what we 
what we saw initially with the first experiments that we run last year is that um, a lot of modern companies have um, incredible amount of useful knowledge within their Slack. The reason is because if it's a fast-paced organization that's moving at a high growth, doubling headcount for the year, they're going to have such a high velocity of communication that is unmatchable to the velocity of the commentation they have. So maybe they'll have a person in charge of the commentation that's documenting an article a week, but they're going to have 40 questions a day mm -hmm. within their Slack channels. So there is certain portion of the market, these Slack organizations, Slack first companies, the modern high growth companies in tech who are having Slack as a backbone of their organization. Mm -hmm. It's actually an essential IP source of information for them. But if you simply do historical uh, extraction of historical data, you're going to end up in the situation of having too much duplicated data, too much uh, outdated information, especially in these organizations where the pace of changes is so high, likely what was true this week in this conversation, it will be completely different from what is true today. Mm -hmm. so, so there is this problem that he has, he's full of a lot of data, it's valuable data, but you also don't know which parts of this data is valid or not. So that's a hard problem to uh, to solve, and that's a problem that we are we have a model uh, where we loop in experts on the team to validate data mm -hmm. on an ongoing basis. So when somebody asks a question, we mindfully resurface an answer, but instead of resurfacing to them, we resurface it to the experts on the team and say, "Hey, it seems like this is a good answer. You previously answered this. Is this still valid?" And mm -hmm. a person answers, and so we're kind of shortcutting the workflow for the expert right. uh, and still reusing the information, but trying to kind of lay, um, layer it out with this uh, validity, as you're saying, accuracy of information, reliability is really important for businesses. So kind of stamp, stamping it with, John said that two weeks ago, and uh, this is the answer to your question. Yeah, and it's a nice, uh, it's a nice uh, collaboration between humans and AI, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And further, the further step that we are getting into right now is how to integrate that information back into the company's information and enrich the original documentation with that conversational data. Mm -hmm. So we go back into the company's Notion or Google Docs, Confluence, and we resurface and enrich, oh, this is what you had before. These are the new answers from Slack. Let's integrate them. So it becomes like a two-sided integration mm -hmm. between the conversational data in the company and the one that's written top-down uh, from the knowledge experts. Yeah. So what's the uh, what? What is your what are your future plans for for the app? We have many things on the roadmap. I think that the enrichment of exports uh, or enrichment of integrations right now it's uh, the big one we are working on, and we're seeing a lot of interest from companies on that. It's interesting how we, how uh, solving this problem is uh, so versatile. It requires a very versatile interface because some people are working deeply within Slack and that's the primary interface of how they are going to consume information. Other people are working within other workflows like a CRM, like Pipeliner, mm -hmm. and they're going to need the answers to their questions right there. And, so for us, uh, the interesting thing is how do we build a platform in this and support as many uh, interfaces as possible so people can reach this additional layer of verified information right from the workflow they already have. Yeah, that's that's fascinating. Yeah, I mean, it's a it, it's it's a it sounds like a great tool. Congratulations on that. Uh, yeah, as you said, I mean, Slack is the backbone of a lot of organizations. Organizations are so you know, dispersed right now, globally, geographically, virtually, et cetera, that, that uh, these communication tools have become so critical to their business. So your tool layering on another layer of value there, I can see the appeal. So listen, Yana, this has been great. All of Yana's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and Question Base. Thank you for having me today, John. Um, 
My name is Yana. I'm the founder of Question Base. You can always reach out to me on LinkedIn. I love talking to other founders, helping with whatever we can. Uh, we graduated Techstars, the accelerator in the US, as well as the Alchemist with our previous company. So I love talking to passionate people, see if we can leverage our network and help anybody out. And uh, people are welcome to check out our tool on questionbase.com. Excellent. Well, listen, thanks again, Yana. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you. Yeah.